We welcome you in our morning service. Our process of him is Atikunamvu Anjema. For your presence, Almighty and everlasting God, to honor you, to glorify you, and to worship your glorious name. Lord Almighty, as we present ourselves before thee, and thanking you, Lord Almighty, for having been with us and given us this opportunity, we invite your presence, Lord Almighty, as we minister this day. There, Lord Almighty, you will be with us together from the beginning to the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We welcome you to our morning service, Karibuni Sana. On our prayer books, page one, we have come together, the people of God, drawn by his spirit, longing for his word, to praise the holy name of the Lord, to share his glorious news of grace, to pray for our needs and the pain of the world, to rejoice in his love and be sent in his peace. We are heirs of the Father, tears with the Son. renewed in the spirit. Together, together we are one. Wash and be clean, put away evil deeds from your sight. Cease to do evil and learn to do good. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins in repentance and trust, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins. So let us confess them to our Father. 
eternal Father, Father God, God of our ancestors, before, before your power all things tremble, but through your Son we approach your throne. We, we have done wrong and neglected to do right. Our sins we heal on our hearts. Lord, have mercy, count them not against us. Grant us the joy of forgiveness and lighten our hearts to the glory of Christ, who died and rose again for us. Amen. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ rejoices at repentance and declares his acceptance. The dead are alive, the lost are found. His goodness and mercy will follow you the days of your life, and you will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who live in your house. They, they will always, always be singing your, your praise. praise. Praise the Lord. The, the name, name of, of the, the Lord, Lord be praised. praised. Glory to the Father in whom all things began. Glory, Glory to, to the Son who became, became the Son of Man. Of man. Glory, Glory to the Spirit, Spirit who inspires and renews. The, the Lord, Lord our God, God forever. forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us join in the jubilant song. For the psalm reading. Our psalm is taken from Psalm 71. Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge to which I may continually come. You have given the command to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O oh my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man. For you, O oh Lord, are my hope, my trust, O oh Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been as a potent to many. But you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength is spent. For my enemies speak concerning me. Those who watch for my life consort together and say, God has forsaken him, pursue and seize him, for there is none to deliver him. O oh God, be not far from me. Oh, my God, make haste to help me. May my accusers be put to shame and consumed. With scorn and disgrace, may they be covered who seek my heart. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation of the day. Of their number is past my knowledge. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God, I will come. I will remind them of you, your righteousness, you as alone. O oh God, from my youth, you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me, until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. Your righteousness, O oh God, reaches the high heavens, you who have done great things, O oh God, who is like you? You who have made me see my troubles and calamities will revive me again from the depths of the earth. You will bring me up again. You will increase my greatness and comfort me again. I will also praise you with the help for your faithfulness, O oh my God. I will sing praises to you with the lyre, O oh Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you, my soul also which you have redeemed. And my tongue will talk of your righteous help all the day long, for they have been put to shame and disappointed who sought to do me hurt. Glory to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It was in the beginning, it's now, and it shall, shall be. be. Amen. Amen. We shall sit for the uh, Old Testament reading and New Testament reading. 
Testament reading is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 to 10. Deuteronomy 30, 1 to 10. When all of these blessings and curses I have set before you come upon you, take them to heart. Whenever the Lord your God disperses you among the nations, and when you and your children return to the Lord your God, and obey him with all your heart and with all your soul according to everything I have commanded you today. Then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where he scattered you. Even if you have been punished to the most distant land under the heavens, from there the Lord your God will gather you and bring you back. He will bring you to the land that you belonged to your fathers, and you will take possession of it. He will make you more prosperous and numerous than your fathers. Then the Lord your God will circumcise your hearts and the hearts of the descendants so that you may love him with all your heart and with all your soul and live. The Lord your God will put all these curses on your enemies who hate and persecute you. You will again obey the Lord and follow all his commands I'm giving you today. Then the Lord your God will make you the most prosperous in all the work of your hands and in the fruits and the young of your livestock and the crops of your land. The Lord will again delight in you and make you prosperous just as he delighted in your forefathers. If you obey the Lord your God and keep his commands and decrees that you are, are written in this book of the law and turn to the Lord your God will, with all your heart and with all your soul. That is the end of our first reading. Thanks be to God. Nita tangaza neno la kebwana kwa mataifa mbali mbali o tuimbe na tumsifu bwana tuimbe na tumsifu bwana Our second reading is coming from the book of First Peter, chapter 3, starting to read from verse 8 to 18. My name is Raymond Jello. I'm born again. First Peter, chapter 3, from verses 8 to 18. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On contrary, repay, sorry, verses 9, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On contrary, repay evil with blessing because this is you are called so that you may be an inheritor of a blessing for whoever would love life and see 
good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened, but in your hearts reveal Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with, a, with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against you are good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if it is God's way to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteousness of the unrighteous to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body but made alive in the spirit. This is the end of our reading. Thanks be to God. To a sema a sante, to a sema a sante, to a sema a sante, ewe mungu Let us stand so that we stand together with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world today to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe in God, the, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born, born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. shall be opened unto you. So we pray, our, our Father in heaven, heaven holy be your name, your, your kingdom come, your, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. For, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide our president and give him your wisdom and justice. May your ministers serve you faithfully and you allow people joyfully in the valley of the shadow of death. Protect us in the Lord and staff. Like trees planted by the waterside, grant us the fruit of your spirit. Send us out as the salt of the earth and as the light of the world. May the earth be filled with your glory as the waters cover the sea. Today is the seventh Sunday of Pentecost. And the prayer appointed for the day, Almighty Father, we thank you for Jesus, our Lord and bread of life, who desires of his children to be nourished physically, but more so spiritually, by accepting him as Lord and Savior in their lives. Grant us so to receive Jesus 
be cleansed of all our sins and eternally be fed, never to hunger again. Amen. Amen. Let us pray uh, for peace, almighty and everlasting God, Father of Prince of Peace. In returning and rest, we are saved. In quietness and trust, is our strength. Grant us the blessing of making peace and the joy of seeking justice. Take from our souls all strain and stress, and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us all join in the prayer for grace. Almighty, Almighty God, you have been, been our God, God through the night. night. Keep, Keep us in your care, care through the day, walking in the light, bearing witness to your way, seeking first your kingdom and seeing you in everyone. Guide us in the footsteps of your Son and lead us on the path of your everlasting day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, this opportunity, we want to go before the Lord with our needs. Let us remember uh, our nation and uh, all the other nations that have been drastically affected by COVID-19. Let us remember the bereaved and uh, even as you present your request to the Lord, even those who are watching us from home, uh, kindly it is time to call upon the Lord and we believe that he will hear our prayer. So we invite our brother to lead us in that session. Amen. Those who are watching us, if you are sitting, I want to request you to stand up so that we may praise our maker because we are celebrating the victory of God because of what he is doing. Kwa hivyo tuanze kwa kupigia bana makofi mazuri. Pigia bana makofi mazuri. Kutumaini sina Ila damu yake Yesu Sina wema wakutosha Rambi za kukuzi Weta kutumaini sina Ila damu yake Yesu Sina wema wakutosha
생 모양고 라피키 양고 외외 같이 가 사파리 양고 아침에 에야나 외외 바나우 생 모양고 라피키 Chica, safari, ango, chachembe, ea na wewe, pamocha, pamocha, na wewe, pamocha. Taka irimi eshimi we ayari kute mashaka sawa sa awagna we we mariha basi kute taka irimi. Shaka sawa sa awa na we we pamoja na we we pamoja na we we hearing me kute mashaka sawa sa awa na we. Shaka, sawa sa, awa na we we. Wana tuna kuchukuza, wana tuna kuyimindi. Mana kuna kama we we bon. Una weza yote mfano wa mfano. Wahaki kabo ana pamoja na we we bon. Yote bon atuna kuwa salama. Yote bwana tukiwa na wewe bwana yote bwana yawezekana ufanye ufanye bwana tunakushukuru bwana wa mbinguni bwana tunakuimini maana kuna kama wewe mfanye ufanye mshindi wa washindi ni wewe mfanye bwana hakika kuna kama wewe bwana wa mbinguni tembelea bwana maisha yetu ufanye na ukaguze mioyo ya kila mmoja wetu ufanye na ukawatembele bwana kwa nguvu zako na ukawaguze mfalme wa mbinguni walio bwana manyumbani bwana wa mbinguni wakikuomba bwana wa mbinguni tunakuomba bwana na ukawatembele Jehova tunakuomba bwana na ukawatimizia maombi yao maana unaweza yote mfalme wa mfalme hakika kuna kama wewe bwana ni saruti ya nemlo bwana tunakutukuza Tunasema pamoja na wewe Pamoja na wewe Pamoja na wewe Katika safari yangu Tatengwe so much we want to appreciate your presence in our midst this morning oh god we count it a privilege master that you have brought us to the beginning of this day 
and that after a whole week you have brought us together at your altar, O God, that we may be able, O King of Grule, to come and repent of our sins, and that because the blood of Jesus was shed at Calvary for us, we may be cleansed by this blood and all the sin in us be punched from us, O God, that we may receive your favor even this morning, O mighty Redeemer. We want to thank you, O Jehovah, and acclaim you as Lord in our lives. We have seen you, O Father, in the last one week, and all our lives, O Father, we have continued confessing you because you are good to us, O Master. And we have received the great benefits, O Father, of belonging to the King of kings and Lord of lords, O Master. We thank you and we bless you this wonderful morning. Jehovah God, we want to thank you even for them that cannot be able to make it to the church because of the restrictions that, been, uh, that have been brought about, because of this uh, disease that has been ravaging all the nations in this world, O oh Master, and particularly in our own country, Kenya. But we count it a privilege again that we are whole, O oh Jehovah, and that you have protected us, O oh King of Groda, and you continue shepherding us, O oh mighty Redeemer, surrounding us, O oh King of Groda, with the uh, with a hinge of fire so that we are not going to be attacked oh jehovah but we are going to be fruitful in your vineyard oh king of glory as you use us oh jehovah to reach even our congregation and not just our congregation even then the people who are outside this place oh god we are going to reach out even to the people outside our county uh, outside our country and we want to trust and believe that you are going to make us impactful in the whole of the nations of the world, O oh God, because of this opportunity that you've granted us, O oh King of Glory. We thank you and we bless you, even for our church, O oh mighty Savior. As we remember the Anglican Church of Kenya and all the congregations therein, O oh Father, we remember the leadership and particularly uh, our Bishop, uh, Right Reverend Joseph Kivosha of our Diocese of Kirinyaga, that you may remember him, O oh King of Glory. Grant him wisdom, O mighty Redeemer. Give him the energy, O Jehovah, that he may have this outreach to all the people in Kirinyaga County and the Diocese of Master. I want to thank you for the leadership below him, the, all the pastors in our churches, and particularly the ones in our own congregation, St. Thomas Cathedral, O God. That you may remember our, right, our, our Reverend uh, Gesho and uh, Reverend Masse, Reverend Shomba, Reverend Kaigore, all the evangelists of the church, all the Christian leaders at the village level, and everybody who worships you in this church, O oh Master, that you may remember us and continue reviving us. Give us encouragement to continue facing the future, O oh Jehovah God, with a lot of determination. We want to thank you even for the people who have lived with us for many years, and now you have called them to yourself, O oh God. I know it is not easy for the families that have lost their dear ones, but we are praying that, O oh Father, you are going to fill the void left by our dear ones, and that you are going also to give us an opportunity of granting them a good set off to the glory of your mighty name. We thank you, O King of Glory, for our children who are going to be with us for the rest of the year. Father, we pray that you are going to continue encouraging our children so that they can continue revising and reading books on Jehovah, that their minds will be engaged of you, O King of Glory. Help the parents to continue having good fellowship and to continue teaching them, Jehovah God, that they are not going to have void even in this time that we think is going to be lost. But we know, O oh Father, we are going to recover it by having good fellowship with our children. We thank you and we bless you for our country, Kenya, and particularly the leadership that you gave us, O oh God. We thank you for our president, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, His Deputy William Ruto, all the ministers given authority under them, that you'll continue using them for your own glory, O oh Master. Continue, O oh King of glory, blessing them with good ideas that, O oh Father, even their... Uh, our economy that was ravaged by COVID, King of Grole is going to continue being revived and that we are going to be a prosperous country because it's what you have promised even this morning by the readings that we did. We thank you and we bless you for the everything that is happening around us. We have seen the revival of the economy this time around, O oh God. The locust, O oh King of Grole, you have wiped them out of the face of our country, O oh King of Grole. We don't hear of any more flooding, O oh Jehovah God. We also want to trust that even this disease, the COVID-19, is also going to be cleansed of you, O oh Jehovah God. Because what we cannot be able to do ourselves and mankind 
it is possible with you almighty father receive the honor and the glory we invite your presence in our service oh master that you may continue guiding us O oh king of glory and that you are going even to talk to us through your servant uh, reverend margaret today oh god and that whatever she is going to deliver today will have an impact in our lives oh father now and even in the future we thank you and we bless you for everything we are going to do to this place in this place oh father and we trust that oh king of glory you are going to bless us you are going to bless our people you are going to bless our children our country is going to be blessed and our country is also going to be blessed because of the prayers we are offering to you today continue hearing us oh mighty redeemer and because this is our humble prayer in jesus mighty name amen, amen. By faith, we believe that we have received uh, what we have been praying for. May the Lord bless you. Now it is another opportunity to give our gifts to the Lord. We want to thank you, uh, our members of Cathedral, who have continued to support the ministry. And even beyond Cathedral, even some outside uh, our county, you have continued to support us. May the Lord bless you. Now we shall... Uh, uh, give and for those who are giving through mpesa the number the uh, the business number is four zero zero two 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 account number is three two seven five hash then you can indicate the form of uh, offering whether tithe thanksgiving or the normal offering again business number four hundred triple two account number three two seven five hash then we shall give our gifts. Nita bibu wa karibu tabibu wa jabu narema zadaima ninda wa ya keje imbeni imbeni mala Yesu wana wekeri metukuka jina la ke Yesu. Let us pray. Our heavenly Father, our God, we thank you for these offerings which have been given by your servants. This in Ikundu tithe other gifts, this is from our working places, others from the farmers, and everybody else who has given. Bless us and keep it as it deserves yourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's another opportunity that we have to hear the word of God. We thank God for our guest preacher, our sister, Reverend Margaret. Uh, she is the Gatito pastor, and she's also the one in charge of Sunday school. May the Lord use you in a mighty way. To prepare our hearts, we shall sing, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. From Emmanuel's feet And sinners blood beneath the flood Lose all their guilty sins I do believe, I will believe That Jesus died for me That on the cross he shed his blood from sin to set me free. And I thee free choice to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, though I see, wash all my sins away. Jesus died for me, that on the cross he shed his blood from sin to set me free. Dear dying lamb, thy 
thy precious blood shall never lose its power. Till all the wrath of church of God be saved to sin no more. I do believe, I will believe that Jesus died for me. That on the cross he shed his blood from sin to set me free. Have seized by faith I saw the stream thy flowing wounds apply. Redeeming love has been my theme shall be till I die. I do believe, I will believe that Jesus died for me. That on the cross he shed his blood from sin to set me free. Sweet a song, I'll sing thy part to save. When these qualities being stammering down, lie silent in thy grave. I do believe, I will believe, but Jesus died for me. Not on the cross. From sin to set me free. Yes, Heavenly Master, that is what we believe. That Jesus died that we may be set free. And now, Lord, as we wait to hear from you, may you help us learn to understand and to grasp your word, Jehovah, King of glory, that we may know your will and we may be able to obey you, Lord. Use me for your own glorification. For this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Those who are together and those who are watching us, I want to say this morning, I'm glad because of the doings of the Lord in my life. I am Margaret Kayuri, born again by the grace of the Lord. Today, we were led for two readings, one from the Old Testament and the other one from Second the second one from the New Testament, and the Old Testament was coming from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, and we read verses 1 to 10, and then we read 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 8 to 18, and also we had Psalm 71. And I want to speak from the two readings, the Deuteronomy and the one from Peter. Now, from the Old Testament, as we learn from the book of Deuteronomy, we find that this chapter 30, you cannot speak about it without going back to chapter 29. Chapter 29 and chapter 30, verse 1 to 20, they are joined together and called Moses' address. And this was the third address to the people of Israel. And some scholars say that chapter 29 and chapter 30 are a summary of chapters 1 of Deuteronomy to chapter number 28. And in the ancient Near East, duplication of writings was very common. To other scholars, they say that chapter 29 are sermons which precede the final taking of the covenant oath. And so if you go through chapter 29 of Deuteronomy, you find that it has various sections. From verse 1, Moses took through the people of Israel the historical review of what the Lord God had done, the great works of the Lord, and the great trials, the great wonders, and the miraculous deeds of the Lord, which he had done in their sight. And then he continues, to exhort them or to call the people of Israel to commitment 
in the presence of the Lord. And he was calling them to enter into a covenant with God. And this covenant, they were to enter with, with God, they were to enter, all of them, their children inclusive. And then Moses continues with his address to the people of Israel. And we find that he's now giving a warning to the people of Israel that if they rebel against God, then a curse or curses will fall them. And Moses reminded them that if they, they would come and rebel against God, these people will be wiped out. And he, or he, had, he told them they, to take heed that they do not allow bitter roots, which are poisonous, to grow among them. Because if they did, this would, be wrong, would bring scorn to the people of Israel. And the other nations would laugh against them. And they would say they are fallen because they worshipped other gods. And as we conclude chapter 29, we find that in the last verse of chapter 29, verse 29 itself, it talks of the secrets of God. And Moses reminded the people of Israel that the secrets of God, what he has not revealed to them, or what he had not revealed to them, that one should not bother them, and they should not be concerned about it, but rather to be concerned with what the Lord had revealed to them. And this was his covenant with them. And so, we are also being reminded that we should be bothered about what the Lord has revealed to us today. Because God has so many secrets that human beings cannot understand. And this brings us to our reading of chapter 30, verse 1 to 10. And as we enter chapter 30, the topic today is conditional restoration. And when I think of conditional restoration, this came to my mind that we are now celebrating the reopening of the churches. But with the reopening, there were conditions that were set for the church to be reopened. And if we can count them, there are so many that a sanctuary, we should not have more than a hundred people who congregate together. Before we get to the sanctuary, people have to wash their hands very well. There has to be water and soap and sanitizers all around the sanctuary. Those were set conditions. Services are not to go for more than an hour in a service that will be held in a sanctuary. And in fact, even the people who will be serving in the altar they have to be very minimal. Those are conditions which are set for the reopening of the churches and many others. And so, as I was thinking about that, I considered the people of Islam. And as Moses addressed these people, Moses was looking to the future days which were to come. And so, he was exhausting these people that when those days come, that they would remain faithful to God. The days, maybe, to them, they would look and see as if they are far away from approaching. But Moses reminded them that when those days come, they should take heed not to forget the commandments of the Lord. And so, he brought to their minds once again the content of the book of the law as it is in Deuteronomy 5 all through to chapter 29 verse 19. And more so, he reminded them the blessings that would follow them and the curses. If they disobeyed the Lord, they would be followed by curses. But if they obeyed the commandments of God, then blessings would follow them as we can see, we saw in chapter 28. Now as we talk of conditional restoration, verse 1 of chapter 30, we get what, we, what I'm calling hope for restoration. And in this verse, 
We find Moses is calling the people of Israel back to remember the, what God had done in their lives. And he reminded them that many times they failed to obey the commands of God. And Moses once again reminded them of the love that God had for them. Because even if they kept falling astray, even the, if they kept forgetting the commandments of God, that even in such situations, God was still merciful. And even if they would be scattered among us nations, that God, because of his love, he would once again call them back. And so that would not be the edge of Islam, being scattered among us nations. And so I was thinking, these people of Israel, as, as Moses was speaking to them, and warning them of the future days to come. So I was wondering, now what about us as the church, as the Christians today? How many times do we fall astray? How many times do we forget the marvelous deeds of God? How many times do we forget what God has done in our lives? And even we don't count how the Lord has carried us. And as Christians today, as Moses was speaking to these people in chapter 29 and warning them not at one time to allow the bitter loots to glow amongst them, how many times as Christians do we allow bitter loots to glow amongst us? Bitter loots of hatred, bitter loots of disobedience. How many times do those bitter loots of corruption glow amongst us in the society that we are today, in our families, and even in the church? And the question comes, has the church of Christ also forsaken the commands of God? Has the church of Christ also fallen and this leading the society to defilement and leading the church and the people of Christ to be scattered amongst the heathen. A few months which have passed by, the church has been in prayer, asking God, Lord, it is until when that we shall congregate together to worship you. But here comes the question. Oh, whatever the church has going through, might it be because the church forgot to obey the commands of God? And then, just like the Lord did to the Israelites, the Lord led the church away, led the church to lead itself. And then it goes to be scattered amongst the heathen. But remember, we said in verse 1, all hope is not gone. Praise the Lord. There is still some glimpse of light and there is hope. If we reconsider the marvelous deeds and the wonderful deeds and the workings of God and then we obey his commandments, there is a glimpse of light. And you know what, friend? This light cannot shine or come into reality if we don't obey the set condition. And so my second point is, there is a set condition. And the set condition, we get it in the second verse of our reading. Because Moses was telling the people of Israel that they must obey the commands of God and I lead. And when you are when you and your children return to the Lord, you are God, and obey him with all your heart and with all your soul, according to everything I command you today, that if you and your children obey the Lord with all your hearts and keep the commands that I'm giving you today, so the condition that is set is that we must obey the commands of the Lord. And you know what? For this 
people of Israel. There was never a that option. The ways were only to either to obey and receive the blessings of the Lord or to disobey and then consequences of curses would follow them. And you know what? Moses was telling the people of Israel that it is not only to obey, but to obey and keep the commandments. And so when I was thinking of the word keep, I could see that I'm obeying today and keeping is doing it continuously. So there will be no time that or any time, not even a single minute, that I'll forget to obey the commands of the Lord. And that is what the Lord is calling us to do. That he wants us to obey his commands and keep his statutes. And we continue doing it. It is not today. It is not partial that we do it today and then tomorrow we forget. It is not us alone. But the Lord is reminding us. It is us and our descendants. So it is us all. Our children inclusive. Not part of our generation. That is to keep the commands of God. But it is us and the descendants as the people were reminded. And as we learned in the second reading, Peter is reminding the Christians the duties of Christians and the conduct, the conduct of a Christian who is following Christ. And as Peter was talking to the Christians, he reminded them as he quoted Psalms 34, verse 12 to 16, that whoever would see goodness in his life or whoever would see and receive the blessings is one who would obey the Lord. And so he's also speaking to the Christians and reminding them that as Christians, they are called to obedience as loyal citizens. And when I was thinking of loyal citizens, I was thinking of our nation today and the people in our nation. And I was wondering, are we not Christians who keep walking aloud without observing the simple rules that we are given because of COVID-19? We are told to put on our masks when we go to where people are congregating. But you find us, you find that we keep forgetting. We don't obey simple rules and we are Christians. And so I was wondering, when Peter talks of loyal citizens, are we loyal citizens? He reminds these Christians that they are called to unite, to stay united, to portray love to one another, to be sympathetic and compassionate. He also reminded them that they are called to humility and not to be people who avenge themselves if the blessings of the Lord were to follow them. And now, dear brethren, I was also considering that as Christians, we have no other option but to obey because the Lord is urging us to obey, to obey our rulers, to obey the commands of God, to follow what we are expecting to follow, like Christians. And if we are able to keep that set condition of obedience, then we will come to what I'm calling the ultimate restoration. Praise God. This ultimate restoration is what would follow. And as Moses was speaking to the Israelites, if we go to verse 3, we find that Moses is telling the people of Israel that if they obey, then the Lord your God will restore you and restore your fortunes. And the Lord will have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where he has scattered you. And when I was talk, thinking of ultimate restoration, one, the Lord is promising that he will restore his people and restore the fortunes of his people. He will have mercy upon his people. 
And in fact, verse 3 continues to tell us that the Lord will redeem his people from the bondage. The bondage of the oppressors. The bondage of sins. The, the bondage of racking. The bondage of sorrows. Because he is God. And when he promises, what he promises, he surely fulfills. And as we continue reading, we find that in verse 5, he is promising to restore to his people their possession or their inheritance. And he told the Israelites that when they would be gathered back, then the Lord will restore to them their possession which belonged to their forefathers. And so that same promise remains and is kept for us today that the Lord will restore our inheritance. And not only restoring, but he will restore in abundance. Buana Asifiwe. He will restore what we feel is lost. He will restore whatever has been devoured by the locust in our lives. As he spoke through prophet Joel in chapter 2, verse 25, that whatever has been devoured by the locust, the Lord is going to restore. And we can count so many of whatever in our lives today has been devoured by the locust, has been devoured by COVID-19, has been devoured by the enemies of the church. But the Lord is promising that if we obey, Whatever has been devoured will be restored. How I pray that we would obey so that restoration would come our way. And as we go to verse 6, we find that the Lord is promising to restore and renew the hearts of his people. When he talks of circumcising their hearts, and you know to the Israelites, circumcision was for a covenant. As you can read from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 10 to 14. God made a covenant with Abraham. And he, he said that through circumcision, then that covenant between God and his people shall remain. So when the Lord is talking in verse 6 of circumcision, the Lord is reminding his people that this circumcision is not only physical, but of the heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. Then, the hearts of his people will be renewed. They will be strengthened spiritually. And in fact, as we celebrate the reopening of the church, we are awaiting because the spirit of God's people will be renewed and spiritually the people will once again be renewed. And in fact, they will sing joyfully to the Lord. And you know what? When the hearts of people are renewed, they are drawn back to God. And they will be willingly serve the Lord and willingly obey his commands. How we wait to see this come true in our day as Moses told the people of Israel. And as we continue, we find that in verse 7, the Lord is promising deliverance from the enemies. When he talks of the curses will befall your enemies who persecuted you. The Lord is reminding his people that he will fight for them. And he will deliver his people from the snares of their adversaries. And you know what? How great it is for the Lord to be the deliverer of his people. I trust we can also stand today and say that today the Lord has delivered his people. When the church are being reopened, the Christians can sing and say, Lord, we have seen your deliverance. We have been waiting for this day and for this time, and surely it has come true. Then we can praise and worship you. And as we continue to verse 9, we find that the Lord is promising of untold blessings. Abundance blessings to his people. Prosperity to his people. He promises 
abundance. When they go to the, the farming, they will farm and harvest in abundance. Their frogs will multiply. The Lord will uplift them. And the Lord is keeping and promising us today that though we might have gone through hard times, though we might have suffered economically, though we might have been in strains, but the Lord is reminding us of abundance and prosperity in our lives. But you know what, Fred? This is not coming our, our way just because it is coming. There is the set condition that we have to obey the commands of the Lord. And now, brethren, I want to remind you that the Lord wants to make a closer relationship with you. The Lord has promised that he will revive. The Lord has promised that he will renew. The Lord has promised that he will restore our life, our possession. He will restore our hearts back to him. He will restore our relationship. The Lord has promised he will restore our businesses. He will restore our possessions. And even as we wonder the many months ahead of us before the children, the children go back to school, but the Lord is promising to restore everything that has been lost. How I pray that each one of us would hearken to the call that the Lord is calling us, that he needs obedience from each one of us, that he requires that we obey his commands, that we obey his will, that we walk according to his status, that we may receive all the blessings that he has promised. Brethren, let me remind you, me remind you that though you might be in the darkest corner, there is hope of restoration. Though you might be looking and seeing as if there is no tomorrow, there is hope for restoration. But remember, the condition is for the ultimate restoration, you have to obey the commands of God. You have to walk light with your God. How I pray that each one of us would change and as we continue celebrating, we will change our ways and obey the Lord our God that all the promises he has promised may befall us and our children. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, Lord, for you have spoken to us. We pray that, Lord, you may help us to be obedient unto thee, that all the promises you have promised, they may befall us in all our days. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Trust and obey, for there's no oh, other way to be happy in Jesus. Jesus. But, but you trust and obey. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, According to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. We want to thank you for watching us from home and wherever you are, you are. May the Lord continue to watch over you. Our recessional hymn is He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. He 
Still of trouble, see. 